Afghanistan 2011, 10 years after the ousting of the Taliban. International troops have been helping to restore peace and security from the beginning. More roads have been built over the last decade than in Afghanistan's entire history. Eight times more children are going to school than in 2001, and that figure again includes girls. Afghanistan has an elected parliament and a constitution that respects human rights. International combat troops will have pulled out by 2014. Responsibility for national security is already being passed to the Afghans in a phased handover process. At the Bonn conference on Afghanistan in early December, the international community deliberates on how the successes of the past decade can be maintained and developed, and how the community should continue to support Afghanistan. It is a great privilege to have you here today to mark the 10th anniversary of our shared commitments and efforts. And also to thank you on behalf of the people of Afghanistan. On 10 years... Representatives from 100 countries and international organizations, as well as representatives of the Afghan state and civil society, hold consultations in Bonn over their involvement in Afghanistan. The focus of the program is firmly on the future. At this student conference, for example, young Afghans get the chance to let the world know what they want for their nation in discussions with high-ranking politicians and scholars. The biggest hope and wish that we have is peace, and we want peace, peace and peace. <laughs> the people in Afghanistan are tired of war. We had 30 years continuous war. For my country, this is a big hope, because in Afghanistan, after one, uh, 10 years, after one decade, there is another golden chance that our government should use this chance. Then, a visit from German Foreign Minister Guido Westerwelle. His message is to the young people of Afghanistan, and he reassures them of Germany's steadfast support. The international community will commit ourselves that we are ready and that we are willing for long-term solidarity with Afghanistan and the people in Afghanistan. This means uh, we will not leave the people of Afghanistan alone. And that support will continue, primarily on a humanitarian and political level. For some time now, Afghanistan has been preparing itself for a future without foreign troops, with help from the international community. It's summer 2008 in Kabul, and German police officer Stefan Seifert is on the road with an Afghan patrol unit. Together with 400 other specialists from across Europe, He's here to support the Afghan government as it sets up its own police force. Today, he's demonstrating the correct way to carry out a vehicle spot check. This police academy is also receiving support from Germany and will continue to do so after 2014. 2,000 recruits are receiving their training here and soon they'll be responsible for the security of their nation but their low wages make them susceptible to bribes, something the Afghan government will have to address. There is still much to be done in Afghanistan. The constitutional state and administration must be strengthened, and more must be done to combat terrorism and the drugs trade. To this end, the Afghan government is looking to improve communication with all sections of the population. That's why, in the future, the political process takes on a particular significance and has to resolve the questions of reconciliation and the distribution of power, taking into account all social and ethnic groups. This also has to mean holding talks with rebel groups, such as the Taliban. Germany is merely hosting the Bonn conference. The meeting is chaired by Afghanistan, and for the first time, representatives of Afghan civil society are in attendance. German political foundations are ensuring their voices are heard. On the fringes of the Bonn conference, at this event organized by the German Association for International Cooperation, GIZ, women's rights activists insist progress will only be made if their rights are enforced.
Dr. Anis Akgar wants to see a reduction in Afghanistan's maternal mortality rate, among the highest in the world due to the country's rudimentary health care. Nevertheless, she says great achievements to date should never be forgotten. I used to have to work in secret, even though people desperately needed doctors. We had to organize secret tuition for our daughters. It was all very risky. Now we're free, which makes it all the more important that we use this freedom and raise our voices to let the government know what we think. A stable society consists of a diverse and constructive civil society. And that's why it's important that we support civil society in its diversity. That from a political point of view, we listen and take it seriously, and that we also address its concerns. The international community is already financing many aid projects that promote civil reconstruction. Germany, for example, is supporting this school in the province of Badakhshan. And upon the request of the Afghan government, Germany has adopted a leading role in the nationwide teacher training program. Many German NGOs are also playing a role, whether it's with karate and kickboxing lessons for Afghan girls, or with apprenticeships, such as this training program for young chefs. At long last, a new generation is growing up in a nation where instead of war, reconstruction and progress are the order of the day. For me, Afghanistan is represented by the faces of the children I have met. I've seen hope and expectation in their eyes. We mustn't disappoint them. The international community has also pledged to continue supporting Afghanistan as it develops its infrastructure. Afghanistan needs power and roads if it is to utilize its immense natural resources and finally make an economic recovery. And the Afghan government has promised to make its own contribution to the process as a result of the Bonn conference. Fighting against corruption, against narcotics, good governance are needed by the Afghan people. That is something that Afghan people deserve to be given by the elected government. It's our duty, it's our democratic duty to deliver our people from these malices. The Afghan students who came to Bonn have followed the conference very closely. After all, it's their personal future that's at stake. We hope that all these things come in the practical way, not only in the paper, because we have been um, witness of different conferences and events. But this time, uh, we hope that after 2014, all these things should be implemented. We should also do our part in this process as well. And I think it's it's the last chance for us, and as Afghan citizen, it's the last chance for me to do my best for my country. There is still plenty to be done, but after the Bonn conference, Afghanistan can be sure of one thing, the international community will not abandon it. And as far as the students are concerned, that's certainly cause for celebration.